Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So today's question asked by you guys is from non-Catholic Isaac. Can you make a video please where you explain the relation between RPM and boost as well as the correct way of use in a Spitfire? So we're going to answer it in a fairly generalized fashion that should more or less apply to all of the current six warbirds in DCS at the moment, uh, 2000, end of 2019. So the first thing we need to understand is what is RPM and what is boost, and then we're gonna look at the relationship, and then we can answer the chap's question about or how to properly use them. So the RPM is the speed of the engine, the speed that the crank is turning around, revolutions per minute, and it's usually measured by the four stroke cycle of the engine. So 3,000 would be 3,000 of the four strokes per minute, which would usually mean 6,000 times that the actual crank has spun round. If you see what I mean, if you don't understand four cycle engines, which is what we've got here, then please just go and check that out, out on YouTube. Now note that this is not necessarily the speed of the prop. The way the propeller is connected to the crank of the engine, the start is going to be a different in all of the different warbirds that we have in DCS. But for this, I think this is what a Mark 9 Spitfire, I think we have a constant speed and variable pitch pitch prop so in this case the speed of the engine here is not necessarily the same as the speed of the propeller but in other aircraft it may well be it depends on the gearing between the engine the crank and the propeller next is boost boost is the manifold pressure so the manifold is a volume of air before it goes into the cylinders for combustion pre-combustion air it's measured in this aircraft in pounds per square inch. It's a typical imperial measurement, PSI. Now, because it's called boost, that usually means that this is going to be a relative measurement rather than an absolute measurement. This is how it works in cars, at least, which I'm very familiar with. So in this case, plus 12 PSI, it means that it's 12 PSI above atmosphere, which at sea level is 14.7 PSI or one bar. If it didn't say boost, if it just said manifold pressure, that would be absolute from zero. So that's just a little difference you need to think about. So to visualize what this boost means, it's going to be positive in all these cases because this aircraft is going to be using a supercharger. The supercharger is adding air pressure onto the local barometric pressure. So at sea level, where we're going to have a local barometric pressure of about one bar, it's in this case, it's 12 PSI added to that. It's cramming in 12 PSI of extra charge air for pre-combustion. Another way is, this is not technically physically true, but a way you can help visualize this is this is similar to the amount of air going through the engine. Now, the more air going through the engine, the more fuel goes through the engine. So this, this boost air is gonna go through the carburetor and fuel is going to be introduced automatically, proportionally to the amount of air we've got going in. So the more this boost goes up, the more proportionally the amount of fuel goes in and the more power we're going to make. It means we've got more air and fuel in the cylinder for combustion. Now, to control these two items, we can control them separately. We have an RPM lever in the Spitfire. I think it calls a propeller speed uh, lever, but technically is actually an RPM lever where we can set the maximum RPM of our engine. So if we set it to 3000, then the maximum that the engine will be allowed to turn at is 3000 RPM. Now that excludes things like if you put the, end, the aircraft in a dive, you'll actually force it, force an overspeed. But ignoring things like that, that's how it works. Or you could set it down at 1800 RPM, or you could set it at 2500 RPM as your maximum. The boost here is controlled by a throttle lever. I believe the throttle lever will control something like a butterfly valve, which will control the amount of air coming into the engine and that's not related per se to rpm so we've got two completely separate controls one the limit of the rpm of the engine two the amount of air or the amount of boost entering the manifold and therefore entering the engine next the relationship between rpm and boost and this is a tough one there is the kind of if you like theoretical simplified version and then there's the actual version so the theoret theoretical simplified version is that there is no link between boost and rpm you could run 3000 rpm with 1 psi of boost you could run 1000 rpm with 22 psi of boost in reality, it doesn't quite work like that. You just don't have that much control between the separation of RPM and boost. They're very much interconnected in the real world. If you let more air in, then even if you don't want the engine speed to go up, it will speed the engine up to the limit. So in reality, there is a proportionality between this guy and this guy here. Now, this guy here and this guy here will give us combined a power output. That's pre-propeller brake 
horsepower measured at the crank. And again, this is a simplified way of looking at it, but you know, we don't want to go into complicated at the moment. What we could say is very roughly, if we were using 12 PSI of boost here at 3000 RPM, that would give us the same amount of horsepower roughly as twice the amount of boost. So that's 24 PSI at half the RPM. So that would be 1500 RPM because overall you've burnt exactly the same volume of air and fuel in those two different scenarios, half the speed, twice the PSI, half the PSI, twice the engine speed. So that would be how I would define the relation between these two guys here. In a car, it's a little different. You do not have a separate control from RPM and boost. You have a single gas lever or accelerator lever if you're in the UK. And that will do roughly the same thing as the throttle lever in this Spitfire here. And the RPM limit, you do not have a control, it will be set in the car of 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM, whatever the limit is. So that's answered the first part of the question. The second part of the question is how do I use RPM? How do I use boost correctly? And the answer is I haven't got a bloody clue. All I do is what I would suggest you do, you guys could do. You can either, when you're in your aircraft, in this case the Spitfire, you open up your flight manual and you look at the charts there that tell you what the maximum RPM and the maximum boost is that you can use while doing different things. Or in this case, Spitfire, look down, I think it's at the bottom right on the wall. And I think all or most of the aircraft will have something similar to this as a quick reminder. And it says, if you are taking off up to 1,000 feet, you can use up to 3,000 RPM of the engine and up to 12 PSI of boost. And you can use anything below that in terms of RPM and boost. Obviously, the less RPM and the less boost you use, then the less power you're going to make and the harder for the aircraft it's going to be to climb. Uh, max climbing for one hour limit so it takes a long time for these aircraft to climb and if you are doing it for one hour maximum then you are allowed to use 2840 rpms uh, with uh, nine plus nine psi of boost if we've got continuous usage so we can keep this throttle and speed basically forever until you run out of gas if you're using a rich and uh, mixture which means higher proportion of gas to air then you can go to 650 and plus 7 psi of boost anything below obviously below is never a problem it's only above is the problem where you're below the engine and if you use a weak mixture so more air to gas then a maximum rpm of that and a max boost of four and we're not looking at rich and weak because that's in a different video but generally speaking the to a point the richer the mixture of fuel to air the less power the engine is going to make, at least in a car, it may work slightly different in an aircraft because altitudes differ, but the higher you can run your engine because the more fuel you put in, it has like a cooling effect and you can avoid something called detonation with the, uh, with the richer mixture. So that explains why that is different to that. And obviously we have control of the mixture in the plane. We're going to actually try doing this. So our plaque is down there almost impossible to get to so you want to print that out on a piece of paper because uh, you can't really see it with track IR on so in this case we want to set ourselves at 7 psi of boost at 2650 rpms we have two controls for that one is the throttle here one is the rpm lever here the rpm lever sets the maximum rpm that the engine can achieve the, the engine will always spin as fast as it can that's just how an internal combustion engine works so we're setting the maximum first of all we're going to set our rpm at 2650 and this can take a little bit of trimming uh where is it and it's hard to get perfect so there that's as close as we're going to get i think and now we can use the throttle to trim our boost down to 7 psi throttle's coming down now there but we're going to change it to four because uh it didn't have to do much of a change so we're going to change it to four instead so we're now 4 PSI, whoopsie daisy, there we go. We are at 2650 RPM, which we trim first of all. Then we add our 4 PSI, it's now gone up because we're lower, so let's turn that down, there we go. There, and we can maintain that pretty much forever with the correct mixture. Hope that helps, see you later.